Hey, everybody. I'm Stephen Baldwin. Gosh, I look fantastic. Hollywood guy. Usual suspects. My favorite movie. Proud American. First of all, I'm dressed as George Washington. Sure. An RV enthusiast. Uncle Stevie B is about to drive the big boy bus. This is my buddy Max, famous financial guru, and well, he's a little bit different. I'm honest, Abe. You're Abraham Lincoln. Oh my God, they're rolling their windows up. Last but not least, my larger than life Pomeranian. <laughs> Be nice. An aspiring star, Rio. With all the drama happening in our great country, I'm hitting the road to have some fun. <laughs> Meet everyday Americans. See a nice frosty bud on here? What did you call it? Frosty bud. I don't know where you're at. Well, What's America to you? Our ancestors suffered the most. And see how things got so crazy. I was naked, completely naked. He bit my finger off. <laughs> to hopefully start to bridge the gap. This is the Great American Pilgrimage. Great American. Welcome to Venice Beach, California. One of the coolest places to be in the world. Well, until now. Stephen is pondering how he can start a conversation that will help bring America together. But Stephen cannot do it alone. He needs the help of his trusted friend, famous financial advisor, Max Kaiser. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Max Kaiser. <laughs> oh my God! Whoa, what's up? Thanks for Fantastic. coming. Fantastic, I can't believe it. We finally made it. It's been a long time, my friend. Yeah. Here we are. I haven't seen you, well, oh, 10 years, 15 years. It goes back 30 years. Remember, I saw you back in uh, Amagansett, I think it was. Amagansett, Long Island, New York, back when you were roommates with Big Brother Alec. Now we're here in Venice, California, the very first place uh, that was the motivation for me to ever ride on an airplane the first time when Big Brother Alec flew me out, 17 years old. He had a place here in Venice. And uh, I wanted to connect with you. Brother, I, I got a niche. And, I, and I'm telling you, I, with all I've done, where all, I've, all the places I've been, everything I've seen, I can't figure out what's going on in America. What, what, what exactly, what are you thinking? I mean, the word that came to mind for me was, pilgrimage <laughs> exactly after like the craziest presidential election the country's divided but in a way that like uh, i mean the only way for me to figure it out i think is just go out on the road and ask people just, just literally embark on a pilgrimage of knowledge so to speak where we're asking everyday Americans from all walks of life, rich, poor, this, that, coffee uh, guy at a barista to a, a, a military airplane pilot, whatever. What, I just want to drive along in an RV, maybe grab my dogs or something, and, and basically just stop along the way and just say, what's America mean to you? We're seeing now that there is an open wound, and it's, it's, it's acting out in a number of different ways. There's a lot of street violence, there's a lot of protest. Yep. So, Racism. Coming coming to the fore. So now we're seeing it. It's not coming from, from a place of, of mystery. We, I think I understand. It's exposed. The it's darkness is now in the light. But I see that vision and that dream of America and the hope that is America, I see that eroding. No question. Right, so, but somewhere out there is the seed of the next revolution of genius. And in that seed will be the spark of hope. I'm hopeful. You got to be hopeful. Yep. That's what America is all about. What makes America great to me uh, is the freedom to obtain the knowledge. See, once you have the knowledge, then you're free to make change. I'm not interested in my opinion. I'm interested in the knowledge of learning from other people's opinions. So I, I'm excited. For me, it's, it's that important. Uh, do you understand that um, this is not a trivial thing? I mean, absolutely. That's what is, is, is exciting to me. Because what I've learned is when you don't know something, do your best to surround yourself with the people that do. I, I also understand that, uh, and this is part of why I called you, I, I'm never going to be able to 
to journey on this whole thing by myself. Uh, I'm going to have to have some help, and I'm going to probably need a whole bunch of people that are smarter than me to, to, to help me get it done. So I see we get out of the cow's end. We go say hi to my three dogs that I have with me, brother, to, to, to go from here. Three dogs as we head on this spiritual journey. You're my spiritual guru. Of course I'm going to go. Wherever you say, I go. <laughs> of course. You ring, we bring. You know what I'm saying? We, bro, this could be an amazing movement and conversation. Dude, let's do it. We're going to go officially to the Great American Pilgrimage. Bro. Let's do it. Take us all the way. And the dogs. And the dogs. <laughs> Let's do it. Before the journey can truly begin, Stephen wants to check in with the owner of this establishment. Come on, Max. And get his unique right. perspective on America. What's up, bro? Mm. Good to see you. You too, man. <laughs> you too. This cafe has been here 50 years. The longevity is rare. And to do it with such style, even rarer. Yeah. I built this from scratch. I didn't have any money, so I got the city to allow me to be my own contractor here <laughs> and build this. You could never do it today. Throwing all social norms out the window, Stephen gets down to brass tacks. What's America to you? Oh, America to me is what Venice is to me. It's the most eclectic subculture in the world. And why so many people come from all over the world and come to America and want to come to Venice is because this is what they really feel about America. This collection of people, white, black, brown, or just me, for example. I'm a white <laughs> now, You can't call me a white <laughs> you can't, but I am. I was born in Panama. That's true. Y cuando yo hablo español, es auténtico. People, when I speak Spanish, say, Jesus Christ, where'd you learn to speak Spanish? When I go back home to visit my family, I'm the only one that speaks English. <laughs> you know? But I grew up in a barrio that was the toughest barrio in Latin America, very, very dangerous. The official name of the street, like you see Washington there, or Pacific here, the official name of the street that I grew up is Sal Si Puede, translated, get out if you can. And it's still that name today. <laughs> you know? They look at me and they see me thinking, what the hell is this? But that's America. Right. That is America. You can be as white as white as I am and be a Latino. Right. And I came here on a visa when I was 13 years old. And you wouldn't think it, you know? But that's what we want. We don't want you to be able to categorize everybody. And, and that's what Venice is for America. So this is what attracts me to Venice, that you can't judge the population here by the facade. You know, the way you describe the Venice and your move here, it's edgy and you, even a little violent. This finger here, see how much shorter it is? Right here, I had an altercation with a guy on PCP. Stevens thinking this gives a whole new definition to finger food. And he, during our scuffle, he bit my finger off, bit it off, had it in his mouth. I didn't even know when it happened. I try to talk my way out of everything. I if I get a guy here, I got a guy here yesterday, and he was taking people's food. I said, whoa, whoa, do me a favor, will you? This is, a, this is a little business, and I'm here trying to make a living for my wife, my daughter, and guys that work for me are all locals. Would you mind taking it down the street? I'd appreciate it. And some guys have said to me, you know, Nobody ever treats us with respect, and we appreciate that. I said, well, I try to do what I get. Blessings, my friend. Thank you for everything. But we got to get back on our pilgrimage. I want to give a hug you. Brother, you're gonna bless you. Love you. Now, it's my turn to give you a kiss. Nah, I'll take it. I love give me another one. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. It's great meeting you. Appreciate it. Right. See you soon, Mr. Right, Hartley. Guys. Take care. Stephen and Max are feeling patriotic, so they decide to hit the beach and talk with some locals about the current state of the nation. First of all, I'm dressed as George Washington. We don't know why. Sure. A. Uh, B. I'm a born again Christian. Mm -hmm. ba -da 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 -da. Regardless of my views in that respect, would you think that the other person that could have become president? would be moving the country in a direction that you would prefer? Or are you one of these people that says, 
I think this guy is just all wrong, but maybe I should give him a chance, or no way he's just all wrong and they should impeach him as soon as possible. Right. I know what he wants to do, but he's going about everything the wrong way. Why? Everything. He's closing off borders, OK? Right. People come to this country to do better, to technology, science, a lot of things. Mm -hmm. They come to this country because they know they can make it better. And when you cut all that off, how can America become better? How can America become great when you're cutting off all the talent coming in? So I have a big problem with that right there. Really quick, just keep an eye on Max. Make sure he's OK. I mean, we should be shooting that. It's adorable. But um, so all I'm saying is mm -hmm. we all get together and start to talk about it. And this show is that conversation. Right. And you know what's up? Not that I think my boy is going to solve anything. Right. This cat's shaking it up. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot about that personally I agree with and right. a lot I don't. Right, right. What don't you agree with? What don't I agree with about uh, this guy? You're uh, talking about P45, right? OK. We call him P45 because he's the 45th president. Wonderful. OK. Uh, I agree with most of what he represents. OK. Um, the wall? But, well, I certainly think that we have to do something to know who's coming in the country, yeah. I don't have a problem with that. But what I'm having a problem See, with... See, we're is, similar, right. and we didn't even know it. Again, it's the way he goes about doing things. It's, it's the way he goes about doing things. Let him talk. I want to hear what he says. But what I'm having freedom a problem with... Freedom Freedom. Freedom. But what I'm having a problem with is... Go ahead. We have Donald Trump, P45, saying that he should fire all the people who want to take a knee in the football stadiums, in the basketball games, as well as throughout America, they should be fired. Wrong. Why? Because it is their First Amendment right, and there's nothing in the NFL books that says that you can't show that you can protest in that light. It's time for us to not talk about the problem. It's time for us to talk about how we need to save the problem. So idea. spread the word what you heard on how we need to strategize to get our people to realize that in spite of all years of past adversity, success can still be obtained. Amen. Amen. Huh? You don't hear me, though. You tune in me not to hear me. You tune in me not to hear me. We're pretty sure they heard him. It's the end of the first day, and already our heroes, Stephen and Max, have seen the passion that Americans have for our great country. They're hoping the Great American Pilgrimage will bring them enlightenment and bridge the gaps that divide us. Great, great American Pilgrimage. Our heroes have started the conversation that will hopefully bring America together. Stephen's hopeful the rest of his time in Venice will be smooth. Okay then. Hey, Ra. What's up? I'd like to maybe swap this out if that's cool. Yeah, that's, 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 <laughs> sure. Right on. Appreciate it. If you couldn't tell from his SoCal style, Stephen has long held an affinity for skateboarding. Everything in here is the Arbor brand, so. That was sweet. Can I put those wheels on that board? Yeah, easy. Look at this. What board is this? This is the Rally. It's a rally photo series. What's the trucks? The trucks are Paris trucks. Uh, so I'm stuff. old school, so yeah, they're, they're really pretty good. new and they're sweet? They're awesome. So they're reverse kingpin, so it's going to feel like super surfy when you're, when you're skating around. Really? They're really turning, yeah. Oh, sweet. They're a lot of fun. Thanks. Here you are. Dude. I love it. Very cool. And, you know, I'm a little... I'm a little glammy, so I had to go with the white wheel, bro. Oh, yeah. You know? Let them know you're there. That's what <laughs> I'm saying. Uh, looks sick. <laughs> I get is like, this guy's wag. Excuse me. That's awesome. <laughs> 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 you need to get a lot of money. Does he do this all the time? <laughs> <laughs> Sneezes like that? <laughs> 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 Eight sneezes, bro. 
Well, thank you, bro. Yeah, yeah good to meet you. Congratulations yeah, uh, with all your success, part. guys. Enjoy thank you, bro. Steven. Appreciate it, guys. Peace. Yeah. Guys. Thanks care. again. I'll talk to you. Ooh, it is smooth, bro. Before the journey can truly begin, Stephen must check in with his dogs. Everybody sit. Perfect on camera. And back to one. And re uh, uh, Rio. Sit. Very good. That's very, uh, re uh, uh. well, my brother Max, I'd like to show you something right over here that, uh, you're more than welcome to join me in continuing, brother, on the Great American Pilgrimage. I think that this will get you there comfortably if your time and schedule will permit. Join Yowza! me. Yowza! Get in! I can't believe it! <laughs> Woo! Dash, baby! Woohoo! And the gap. The Great American Pilgrimage has begun! Yeah, road trip. Yo. Don't forget to sit by the, the cow's end. That's right. With a bit of eagerness and a dash of excitement, our heroes know there is nothing that will get in the way of the journey. This is our worst nightmare. Hold on a second. like a smoked juice. Well, you know, California is the biggest agriculture producer in America by far. Oranges? Oh, oh, they got oranges. Uh, I think uh, Bing Crosby. Thanks to Bing Crosby, invested like all this money in orange groves. This is where we're in orange country, citrus country. You're drinking right, that right there is the nectar of California. I'll tell you what, Max, if you wouldn't mind, let's go for it, Google. Nearest citrus farm. Grass citrus farm. Yeah? Yeah. Well, turn on the navigational uh, support, and uh, I need some more. We're like 20 minutes away, dude. Grass and citrus farm. More nectar of the pilgrimage, please. Let's go to the source. Let's go. As the guys hit their first stop on the road, they're hoping things go down a lot easier than a glass of OJ. There's pulp. <laughs> I almost choked on my pulp. <laughs> yeah. Shall we dance? All right. Wow. This is beautiful. Steven hasn't seen this much green since his cameo in Half Baked. Check it out, Max. I think you'd look spectacular on that tractor. It's incredible. After you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, guys. How are you? Nice to meet you, Steven Baldwin. John Glass. Hey, John. And your name is? John Glass. John Glass. <laughs> well, Max Kaiser. Oh, how's it going? Good to see you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Great to meet you. So we thought it'd be fun to learn a little bit more about the orange business. Come say hi to you guys. Maybe you can show us some of your wonderful product uh, and educate us on farming with oranges. We got some right outside here. Let's go take a look at it. Thanks. These are our navel oranges here. Please don't giggle at me, but this is an orange. It's a navel orange. And right now it's green. It's green. But it's going to turn orange. It'll turn. OK, just yeah. checking. Yeah, that's yeah, right. And you can, <laughs> you not can gonna spray you it, can, orange, you are you? Can, you can see the navel. Well, you could actually gas them and make them orange. But there's the, there's the navel. You yeah. know, that's why they call them navel orange. There's a big navel on it. Now, we were coming through the fire, as we just discussed, coming down here. All that smoke. Has that affected your business at all? 
No, it has not. Not at yeah. all? No. Our biggest struggle is water and water availability. And how long have you been doing this? We've been up here since 1960. From the 60s till now, has that water problem always been the case or just progressively worse? Progressively, it gets worse. Right. Just with population? Because just a big demand for yep. water and a, a diminishing supply because uh, all of our well water is all depleted. So now we, everything we, ha we get here is imported. Yeah, and so it, it becomes very expensive. <sighs> everything, all the water for farming here in Riverside mm -hmm. is brought from somewhere else? Somewhere else. Uh, yeah. Wow. So we just want to hear, sure. what's America to you? That's my question. Well, gosh, it's just... And just say whatever you want. OK. It's freedom. It's, 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 it's getting ahead, being able to work hard and, and get ahead. Now, your family started this when? 1907. 1907. Yeah, first citrus grove being planted. And then you stepped foot on this farm for the first time, approximately what age, to like be working? 1960. Right. I guess I got to figure out how old that would be, but that's what it was. Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> Does America still have that family farming homeland, heartland? Is that still part of America? I, I believe we do. I sure have it. We tried to put a grove in escrow the other day. We're expanding, even though we know we're doomed. Because, you know, we, so we know how to do it. Sounds like faith to me. <laughs> that sounds like the most American thing I've heard all day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we know we're doomed, but it doesn't matter. Much like this pilgrimage. It doesn't we're just going to keep going. go down fighting. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's Fantastic. Right. Yeah, we'll do that. that. Yeah. You mentioned the water is being a challenge. Do you think that's going to continue to be a challenge? Or? The water will always be a challenge. Our biggest challenge with the water has been our biggest challenge. So now we have a greening disease coming from China. They Say were, it again, it's a what disease? They call, they call it Honglang Beng. It's from, uh, uh, from China, started in China. We call it greening. Wow. It's, a, it's a little aphis. And if it takes one bite of your orange tree, that tree's dead. Five, six well, what years. What bites it? It's an aphis. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, like a psyllid. Um, it's a, like an aphis, little, like a little, little bitty bug. eighth of an inch little bug. Wow. How do you fight this? This on the horizon is a potential doom that Am I right or wrong? It seems, is there nothing Oh, yeah, I know what to do. Like I say, Florida probably has three times, four times the trees in California. I mean, they're that much bigger in California, and they're done. Universities come up with a resistant rootstock, but the only thing is it doesn't bear fruit. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't do us any good. But they, have, they haven't given up. They're, they're trying to come up. Is that your, is that your attempt at some stand-up comedy, John? No, that's the truth. OK. <laughs> Please try I'll let you do the comedy. The I'll let you okay. do that. <laughs> I think we should head back in, and, and, and if I don't get a glass of orange juice soon, I'm going to faint. OK, we got that. Follow you. <laughs> Go for it. This okay, way. This way. Thank you. Pilgrimage. It's one of the Real citrus yeah. pilgrimage. Nice put on the strawberries, throw it on it. Gives it's us really great. Good. Ah. Hey. Wow. Huh. I think I've got it. Hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> Brother, I'm gonna get a bunch. That's tangerine. I'm yeah. gonna get a bunch. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll get you a bag if you want a bag. Okay. But Max. Get yourself some figs, Max. Yeah, these figs are looking delicious. Nothing like Get figs. figgy with it, bro. I That's what I'm talking own, about. Uh, fig Newtons with these. Yeah, buddy. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Little bag to go, because, uh, you know, some people who know me, Max, yeah. like yourself, th they say that I carry around too many little bags of stuff. Like All I, right. I personally, I'll put my stuff in, like, a little bag over here, and then a little bag over there, and then a little bag over here, and then now we have an extra new Mm. Oh, that's so delicious. You must good? try some of this. What is it? That is a fig. Oh, my lord. Wow. That's from the bounty of the earth, pal. That's better than the fig bar I buy off the shelf over there at the fancy uh, supermarket. This is this it's is the what real I'm deal. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Well, that's good stuff. Pilgrimage, baby. I think we're on it. Yeah, buddy. We're on a pilgrimage. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, brother. You got all that we need for the rest of the, of the journey, buddy. 
We got it off. Orange juice for days. <laughs> We're the citrus rascals. <laughs> With their sugar count back on track and enough fruit to last them the winter, our heroes are ready to take the next step on this epic journey. History will remember as the Great American Pilgrimage. Next time on the Great American Pilgrimage. Great, great decisions. <laughs>
They're awesome. So they're reverse kingpin, so it's gonna feel like super surfy when you're when you're skating around. Really? They're really turning, yeah. Oh sweet. They're a lot of fun. Thanks. Here you are. Dude. I love it. Very cool. And you know, I'm a little I'm a little glammy, so I had to go with the white wheel, bro. Oh yeah. You know? Let them know you're there. That's what <laughs> I'm saying. That looks sick. <laughs> Dakota's like, this guy's wag. Excuse me. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Do this all the time. Just sneeze like that. <laughs> Eight sneezes, bro. Well, thank you, bro. Yeah, yeah good to meet you. Congratulations yeah, uh, with all your success, part. guys. Enjoy thank your you, boy, bro. Steven. Appreciate it, guys. Peace. Yeah. Guys. Thanks Thank again. I'll talk to you. Ooh, it is smooth, bro. Before the journey can truly begin, Stephen must check in with his dogs. Everybody sit. Perfect on camera. And back to one. And re uh, uh, Rio. Sit. Very good. That's very, uh, re uh, uh. Well, my brother Max, I'd like to show you something right over here that, uh, you're more than welcome to join me in continuing, brother, on the Great American Pilgrimage. I think that this will get you there comfortably if your time and schedule will permit. Join Yowza! me. Yowza! Get in! I can't believe it! <laughs> Woo! Dash, baby! Woohoo! And the gap. The Great American Pilgrimage has begun! Yeah, road trip. Yo. Don't forget to sit by the, the cow's end. That's right. With a bit of eagerness and a dash of excitement, our heroes know there is nothing that will get in the way of the journey. This is our worst nightmare. Hold on a second. Buddy, I'm Stephen Baldwin. Gosh, I look fantastic. Hollywood guy. Usual suspects, my favorite movie. Proud American. First of all, I'm dressed as George Washington. Sure. An RV enthusiast. Uncle Stevie B is about to drive the big boy bus. This is my buddy Max, famous financial guru, and well, he's a little bit different. I'm Honest Abe. You're Abraham Lincoln. Oh my God, they're rolling their windows up. Last but not least, my larger than life Pomeranian. <laughs> Be nice. An aspiring star, Rio. With all the drama happening in our great country, I'm hitting the road to have some fun. Meet everyday Americans. See a nice frosty bud on here. What did you call it? Frosty bud. I don't know where you're at. Well, what? What's America to you? Our ancestors suffered the most. And see how things got so crazy. I was naked, completely naked. He bit my finger off. <laughs> to hopefully start to bridge the gap. This is the Great American Pilgrimage. Great America. Welcome to Venice Beach, California. One of the coolest places to be in the world. Well, until now. Stephen is pondering how he can start a conversation that will help bring America together. But Stephen cannot do it alone. He needs the help of his trusted friend, famous financial advisor, Max Kaiser. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Max Kaiser. Oh my gosh! Whoa, what's up? Thanks for Fantastic. coming. Fantastic, I can't believe it. We finally made it. It's been a long time, my friend. Yeah. Here we are. I haven't seen you, well, 
Oh, 10 years, 15 years. It goes back 30 years. Remember, I saw you back in uh, Amagansett, I think it was. Amagansett, Long Island, New York. Back when you were roommates with Big Brother Alec. Now we're here in Venice, California, the very first place uh, that was the motivation for me to ever ride on an airplane the first time when Big Brother Alec flew me out, 17 years old. He had a place here in Venice. And uh, I wanted to connect with you. Brother, I, I got a niche. And, I, and I'm telling you, I, with all I've done, where all, I've, all the places I've been, everything I've seen, I can't figure out what's going on in America. What, what, what exactly, what are you thinking? I mean, the word that came to mind for me was pilgrimage. <laughs> exactly. After, like, the craziest presidential election, the country's divided, but in a way that, like, uh, I mean, the only way for me to figure it out, I think, is just go out on the road and ask people. Just, just literally embark on a pilgrimage of knowledge, so to speak, where we're asking everyday Americans from all walks of life, rich, poor, this, that, coffee uh, guy at a barista to a, a, a military airplane pilot, whatever. What, I just want to drive along in an RV, maybe grab my dogs or something. Yeah, you can't call me a white you can't, but I am. I was born in Panama. That's true. Y cuando yo hablo español, es auténtico. People, when I speak Spanish, say, Jesus Christ, where'd you learn to speak Spanish? When I go back home to visit my family, I'm the only one that speaks English. <laughs> you know? But I grew up in a barrio that was the toughest barrio in Latin America, very, very dangerous. The official name of the street, like you see Washington there, or Pacific here, the official name of the street that I grew up is Sal Si Puede. Translated, get out if you can. And it's still that name today. Que habla español y nació en otro país. They look at me and they see me thinking, what the hell is this? But that's America. Right. That is America. You can be a white as white as I am and be a Latino. Right. And I came here on a visa when I was 13 years old. And you wouldn't think it, you know, but that's what we want. We don't want you to be able to categorize everybody. And, and that's what Venice is for America. So this is what attracts me to Venice, that you can't judge the population here by the facade. You know, the way you describe the Venice and your move here, it's edgy and it's even a little violent. This finger here, see how much shorter it is? Right here, I had an altercation with a guy on PCP. Steven's thinking this gives a whole new definition to finger food. And he, during our scuffle, he bit my finger off. Bit it off, had it in his mouth. I didn't even know when it happened. I try to talk my way out of everything. I if I get a guy here, I got a guy here yesterday. And he was taking people's food. I said, whoa, whoa, do me a favor, will you? This is, a, this is a little business, and I'm here trying to make a living for my wife, my daughter, and the guys that work for me are all locals. Would you mind taking it down the street? I'd appreciate it. And some guys have said to me, you know, nobody ever treats us with respect, and we appreciate that. I said, well, I try to do what I get. Blessings, my friend. Thank you for everything. But we got to get back on our pilgrimage. I want to give it a hug. Brother, you God bless you. Love you. Now, it's my turn to give you a kiss. Nah, I take it. I give me another one. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. It's great meeting you. Appreciate it. Right. See you soon, Mr. Right, Hartley. Guys. Take care. Stephen and Max are feeling patriotic, so they decide to hit the beach and talk with some locals about the current state of the nation. First of all, I'm dressed as George Washington. We don't know why. Sure. A. Uh, B. I'm a born-again Christian, mm -hmm. ba -da, da 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 Regardless of my views in that respect, would you think that the other person that could have become president would be moving the country in a direction that you would prefer? Or are you one of these people that says, I think this guy is just all wrong, but maybe I should give him a chance? Or no way he's just all wrong and they should impeach him as soon as possible? Right. I know what he wants to do, but he's going about everything the wrong way. Why? Everything. He's closing off borders, OK? Something and, and basically just stop along the way and just say, what's America mean to you? We're seeing now that there is an open wound. And it's, it's, it's 
acting out in a number of different ways. There's a lot of street violence, there's a lot of protest. Yep. So, Racism. Coming, coming to the fore. So now we're seeing it. It's not coming from, from a place of, of mystery. We, I think I understand. It's exposed. It's the darkness is now in the light. But I see that vision and that dream of America and the hope that is America, I see that eroding. No question. Right, so, but somewhere out there is the seed of the next revolution of genius. And in that seed will be the spark of hope. I'm hopeful. You gotta be hopeful. Yep. That's what America is all about. What makes America great to me uh, is the freedom to obtain the knowledge. See, once you have the knowledge, then you're free to make change. I'm not interested in my opinion. I'm interested in the knowledge of learning from other people's opinions. So I I'm excited. For me, it's, it's that important. Do you understand that um, this is not a trivial thing? I mean, absolutely. That's what is, is it, it exciting to me. Because what I've learned is when you don't know something, do your best to surround yourself with the people that do. I also understand that, uh, and this is part of why I called you, I I'm never going to be able to, to journey on this whole thing by myself. Uh, I'm going to have to have some help, and I'm going to probably know a whole bunch of people that are smarter than me to, to, to help me get it done. So I see we get out of the cow's end. We go say hi to my three dogs that I have with me, brother, to, to, to go from here. Three dogs as we head on the spiritual journey. You're my spiritual guru. Of course I'm going to go. Wherever you say, I go. <laughs> of course. You ring, we bring. You know what I'm saying? We, bro, this could be an amazing movement and conversation. Dude, let's do it. We're going to go officially to the Great American Pilgrimage. Brother, let's do it. Take us all the way. And the dogs. And the dogs. <laughs> let's do it. Before the journey can truly begin, Stephen wants to check in with the owner of this establishment. Come on, Max. And get his unique right. perspective on America. What's up, bro? Good to see you. You too, man. You too. <laughs> this cafe has been here 50 years. The longevity is rare. And to do it with such style, even rarer. Yeah. I built this from scratch. I didn't have any money. So I got the city to allow me to be my own contractor here <laughs> and build this. You could never do it today. Throwing all social norms out the window, Stephen gets down to brass tacks. What's America to you? Oh, America to me is what Venice is to me. It's the most eclectic subculture in the world. And why so many people come from all over the world and come to America and want to come to Venice is because this is what they really feel about America. This collection of people, white, black, brown, or just me, for example. I'm a white